what I'm actually doing when, when I go back will be pretty much the same. But everything behind why I'm doing it and what I'm telling my clients has completely changed. It's amazing. I'm, I'm so excited. It's liberating. It's <laughs> yeah, liberating. It's, it's liberating. Yes. to uh, the first ever uh, massage and physical therapist round table. So welcome guys. Give us a wave. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you for tuning in for the first time and listening uh, to the talk show. Um, this is the first one and we're very excited to get going. Um, so I will hand over to everyone individually in a second so they can introduce themselves properly. <laughs> Um, but I'll just give a brief introduction. So um, I'm Kate Brown and I'll be hosting uh, the series. Uh, we also have Chris Madden to give us a speech. We've got uh, Anna Maria Mazzieri. Did I say that wrong? I think you you said it beautifully. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> uh, we have Claire King. Uh, we have Imogen Chester. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Tamer Morsi. Hello. Hello. Welcome, guys. Um, so, um, shall we get started? Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, this panel was going to be picking different topics uh, each month as chosen by you guys. Um, and we're just going to have a chat about them. Um, we all have slightly different backgrounds and modalities so hopefully we'll get a sort of really well-rounded perspective on um on different opinions around it so let's get started i think so um therapist if i kind of pick one of you to start but would anybody like to start actually no. Yeah, don't mind. <laughs> Chris, let's start with yeah, you then. It looks like you're raring to go this morning. <laughs> that's fine. I've had, so, uh, <laughs> um, um, if you just want to tell us a bit about um, where you're based, your qualifications, um, your sort of modalities, and um, how you kind of got started as a therapist. Cool. I'll try not to rub it on for too long. Um, <laughs> So I've been um, I've been practicing for about just coming up to six years now. Um, strange how it all came about for me, um, kind of. But then when when you hear it, it, it doesn't sound as strange. Um, my my mum is a um, holistic therapist, so she's kind of semi retired now. Really, it's funny because I've nicked all of her clients, but um, she's um, she was predominantly uh, she's a massage therapist until her hands ended up giving up a little bit um, and then she moved mainly to reflexology um, until now where she doesn't practice as much now but um, so it's something that's always been in in the family um, and she's a Reiki practitioner as well actually so I've kind of just had this this good energy around from from a young age um, my background initially was in music um, I worked at a recording studio um, from leaving school and I always practiced on the side of that. So I'd have all the bands, I'd be working with them in the days, um, recording their records. And then in the evenings, I'd be doing like an Indian head massage or, or um, relieving some back and neck tension for them. Um, and I, I found that it, it really helped, obviously, the creative side of things, um, keeping them relaxed and, and, and physically relaxed as well as mentally relaxed for the creativity in the music studio. So alongside doing that, um, I bought a canal boat to live on and I moved on to the canal boat. And as soon as I lived, moved on to there, everything just completely slowed down for me. Um, so I ended up just going full time doing treatments. Um, all my clients one by one started wanting to come to the boat for their session rather than using the room I was renting in city centre. I'm from Manchester, by the way. Um, so it just started to become a thing. And then, so I converted the boat into a treatment space and it became my like treatments on the water and um, take a breather is my business that I run. And um, yeah, it became something that, that I could manage to do full time. And it was really nice. And I got to spend all my time on the boat. I'm not on the boat now. Um, <laughs> after practicing and working on there for a few years, it was quite a juggle living on there and working on there, as you can imagine, a narrow boat. It, although it's, you know, it's like a swanky apartment, it's got quite a lot of space. 
it's quite a still quite a small space to work from and and um live on at one time so uh eventually i managed to to get a house and and then i use the boat for work which is awesome and ho and holidays which is awesome so um yeah um i'm i'm um massage therapist uh i'm just trying to go through all my what I've, what i'm doing now i'm level three eye tech massage therapist and um, specialize in deep tissue massage as well um, i'm a reflexologist and i'm just about to start my level five reflexology training as well um i do loads of different extra bits and bobs indian head massage and um, tie foot massage hoppy ear candling um, i'm also a reiki practitioner so quite a lot of, of things. I mean, I find a lot of people come to see me mainly for either massage or reflexology. That's kind of like the the, the, the standard. And then once they come, they, they, they try all the different extra bits and bobs um, on there. So, so yeah, and I think for me, it's treating people as, it's allowing them to come to somewhere like the boat where they can feel like they're free for an hour as well, not just because when I used to work in the city centre, like, the only issue with that is everyone arrived stressed because it was obviously traffic and, and, and busyness and lots of stuff going on. And I've kind of completely flipped that now with how I work and they arrive and it's like, as soon as they step out the car, it's, they begin to relax. So my job's already half done by the time that they've, they've stepped foot on the boat, um, which is great. Oh, cause lovely. It, yeah. So, so yeah, that's in a nutshell, that's me. Well, yeah, it sounds like such a nice space to go and be on the water and just in a little special place outside of the city. It's like a little hidden gem. I feel really lucky with it. it. Just and it was just by chance. I never planned to have a boat to work from. It was just another way to live at the time when I was looking at mortgages and and stuff and and trying to cost things up. But um, everything's kind of fell into place now, which is really nice. Yeah, great. Thank you, Chris. Um, so should we move over to Anna, Anna Maria? Hi. Um. Well. Um. I'm not from Manchester. <laughs> As you can see here from my accent, I'm, I'm from Italy. And uh, so how I came into the industry, uh, I, my background is archaeology. So I came uh, to England to study university. I did uh, archaeology, specialism in Egyptology, but actually I didn't, I didn't finish that, that degree. I went traveling to Egypt with what it is now my husband. And when I came back, uh, I thought, Ooh, I don't like I don't like la, uh, staying idle in my life. So I do like to uh, I like to to do things. And I found this lovely evening training course, which by I think it was called iTech Body Massage or iTech Holistic Massage. And uh, I thought, why not? Because where I come from, massage is so much part of our life. So you don't think twice about going for a massage for lower back pain, for um, feeling good. And so I, I, I joined the course and actually I never left. I never left the industry because all of a sudden I felt uh, I belonged. So it really made sense to me. And I started from a, I started from a little chiropractic clinic while I was working upstairs, but that already gave me the ethos of using massage therapy as a complement or as an inter, as a, as part of an in, a multidisciplinary approach, because there was as the chiropractor plus the rehab instructors and me as a massage therapist. Then I grow. I've grown and uh, I, de I developed uh, different, uh, different skill set and I, I trained further to do sports massage and then I did my level five BTEC with SRM and uh, I, I decided because I want to do my master's, I decided to actually go and do a, a, a bachelor in sports science so that I can get access to my master's. So that is the educational background. In terms of... Um, the uh, the industry, I'm still very much, what I do in practice, I'm still very much, I do call myself a soft tissue therapist because I still very much love the hands-on approach. I think there is a great value in providing, uh, ma in, in my case, is massage and other techniques like muscle energy techniques or uh, soft tissue release and position release 
for they have a great value in helping people feeling good or people in pain and also then I also use quite extensively uh, rehabilitation strategies or movement strategies to work with so that is uh, something that I'm very very passionate about the use of manual therapy together with the use of exercise within the, a good solid evidence-based uh, uh, grounding on clinical reasoning but also I'm, a, I'm an educator and uh, I have been teaching uh, uh, BTEC, <coughs> excuse me BTEC level five courses since 2008 and I also teach CPD courses in the industry or oh, we are very 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 much evidence-based or better said very much evidence informed so we want to bring uh, the evidence informed model into soft tissue therapy into massage therapy and i'm also and i'm quite proud to be a co-creator of a movement called the massage collective again a movement of with my colleagues matt and becky a movement try to bring uh, try to bring uh, a new narrative and an evidence-based narrative to our very important um, profession. So that's me. Great. Thank no, you, it's interesting as, uh, There's so many as questions we want to ask you, but we'll have to, we'll have to <laughs> save some of those for, for later in the series. Um, great. Um, Claire, shall we hand over to you? Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm Claire King and um, I have been a massage therapist since 2003 and uh, I uh, work and live in uh, SW16, so Southwest London, and I have a lovely little studio in my back garden, uh, which doesn't sound as idyllic as the um, lovely water spot, but uh, it's really, really nice and peaceful. Um, so I, uh, as I said, holistic massage, I trained then in sports massage, uh, seated acupressure, Indian head massage, baby massage teacher, um, until recently I was doing needles, yard facials as well. Um, but my most recent qualification is cranial sacral therapy that I graduated in um, a few years ago. And so that is now the focus of my business. Um, and uh, so just moving slightly away from massage, although I would love to do it forever, I kind of just had to think about my body and my hands. Um, and so that's why I trained in cranial sacral therapy and that's slowly kind of taking over. Um, how I got into massage was um, I used to be an actress many, many, many years ago and um, I was quite fed up of not having any money. And uh, a friend of mine said, oh, I'm doing this course, this um, course at uh, night school, um, and uh, it's massage. And I was like, oh, well, that sounds quite good. Give that a go. Um, really, no more thinking than that, I'm afraid to say. Um, but as soon as I got in that room, I thought, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. And so holistic massage with anatomy and physiology, which took me six months. And then I was very fortunate and the teacher asked me then to be his teaching assistant. Um, and with that, I got his mentorship basically. And it was fantastic. It was so, such great learning. So I stayed with him for two years, assisting on that course um, and just getting my massage like better and better and better. So that was, that was such a good kind of way in for me. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I was fortunate enough to kind of get into corporate um, massage as well. So that was great. So I set up some treatment rooms in quite big companies um, and then had a bit of a break, had a couple of kids in, along the way and uh, did a bit of a rejig and decided that I, I wanted to um, do facials as well. because I thought that'd be a nice rest for my body being so tired after having two children. Um, and so I did that for quite a long time. And, uh, and then, as I said, I retrained in cranial sacral therapy and um, just working a lot with that modality now. A lot of babies and mums, and I do um, see a lot of people for trauma work, um, also for um, uh, things like vertigo, tinnitus, lots of nerve conditions as well. Um, but I am, you know, I'm very 
hands-on and uh, missed it totally in, in lockdown. So um, yeah, so that's me. I think that's uh, covered it all for now. Oh, lovely. Yeah, great. Thank you, Claire. Um, no let's hand over to Imogen then. <coughs> right, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> so I, before I entered this world, I was a um, snowboard instructor in the winter and just sort of worked bars. I was always in hospitality in the summer and got fed up of, of that. And I wanted to be a physiotherapist, but my math is non-existent. It's awful. <laughs> so I couldn't, they wouldn't let me in. So I did beauty therapy. Same though. Um, so I went and trained as a beauty therapist. And so that was my introduction to massage. That was the bit I loved about that. Um, and then I worked in beauty doing all the things that beauty therapist does, but obviously including facial massage and body massage and hot stones and all of those bits. For years, I worked in New Zealand. Um, I went down and worked in Dorset. Um, I worked for other people in big clinics. Um, and then after I had my children, so it fitted in nicely with that. And then um, a few years ago, I decided to retrain in my sport. And um, then I got a job. I started off working yeah. mobile part time doing that. Then I got a job in a chiropractor's office working alongside the chiropractors. And then I had enough of that <laughs> and uh, set up on my own. Um, so I then very quickly got very busy working full time out of at 1.3 clinics, six days a week from eight to eight. <laughs> can't believe I did that now um and so now I'm down to two clinics and a little bit less work oh well a lot less work at the moment um and fingers crossed finding the lease on my very own little place today um but still going to be working alongside um a chiropractor who I work with as well um and then treatments I do so I do I'm kind of trying to get away from all the separate things that I've learned along the way and merge them all into one thing so when my clients come in I just pick and mix all the little bits that I've learned and see which work what works for that person but I suppose in the past I've done bits and bobs obviously the holistic stuff and um it's more sports stuff and I just tie I love Thai massage um I'm really getting into that and it's great for my body, never mind the clients. It's it's a lovely way of saving my body, and I really enjoy doing that. Um, and then looking forward, the things yeah. that I'm looking forward to doing this coming for is um, learning a bit more about trauma work. Um, so I'm booked on a course to learn a little bit more about that. And I've also signed up because I know that my practice coming from holistic stuff, I maybe don't do enough movement based work so I've signed up to an introduction to possibly go on and do my Felden, Feldenkrais, I can't never pronounce it properly, um, which is four years I think training but really will help work alongside what I do to get exercise and movement um, as well as the massage. So that's, that's me. <laughs> hey, <clears throat> thank you. Sorry I lost my voice for a second now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, excellent. Um, over to Tamer. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamer Molsky. I am a massage therapist since probably 2018. Um, I'm, I'm based in London in Northwest, uh, in a nice area called Hachan. Um, I'm qualified in deep tissue and, of course, the ITAC level 3, um, lymphatic drainage, chair massage pregnancy and trigger points. Uh, and basically my speciality is uh, trigger points. Uh, I'm working more, I'm delivering more of a cl clinical treatment. So basically the, my work is not massage. My work is just to fix uh, people. So I can work on a tiny muscle for an hour. I can work on the neck for two hours. That's that's basically my 90% of my work is, is that way. Um, 
I qualified in 2018, uh, got some uh, over the past two years, uh, got some awards in different championships. Um, and after that, I, I studied to be a teacher. I'm teaching PPD courses. Um, I'm teaching the tissue trigger point, um, chair massage and body mechanics. Uh, the body mechanics is a course that is not very well known, but uh, it's basically it's working on the on the therapist's posture and how to use the body weight to apply the pressure and to do all the movements, more or less very similar to Tai Chi. Um, what brought me to massage? I used to be um, a business, uh, a, a, an analyst, uh, business transformation and process excellence for about twelve years. Um, I never had massage in, in mind at any point of time. I got to a point, uh, I, 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 mainly I, I didn't like the corporate environment. I didn't like bureaucracy. I didn't like all of that. That's for all my life, basically. And even my job was uh, dealing with a lot of uh, CEOs, directors, uh, and this feeling of superiority in terms of as much as you are got a high title than you're right that was causing me a lot of um, a lot of conflicts in my mind uh, because my work was based on science and uh, scientific methodology basically so it doesn't matter how how experienced you are um, a junior can can get a brilliant idea to, to get things done right. Um, so I got I got fed up with all of that. I thought about changing my job. Um, I thought about physiotherapy in the beginning. Uh, I was super excited. I've always been fascinated with the mind and, mind and body. Uh, always been into sports. Um, so physiotherapy, I when I did some research, I found that I need six years to start working, which wasn't uh, the ideal for me. <laughs> Pardon. Um, and then I found that massage therapy takes me about three months to start working. So I just hmm, okay, that's a, a good uh, first step towards physiotherapy. Day one at the classroom, I was just in love with it. A few weeks later, I thought that no, I'm not going to do physiotherapy. I'm going to um, I'm going to do osteopathy. Three months later, I decided that I'm just going to stay in massage. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's very it, it's everything basically. From for for myself, it's got all the elements that I need to to be happy and to do. Um, to do a job that I have a passion about and to enjoy every single, and until now, I've been doing that for about three years now, I've, I'm enjoying every single treatment that I'm doing, like it's exactly the first treatment that I've done. Um, it's got it's got a lot of, again, it's, it's not just the physical work that we do, uh, it's, it's got a lot of elements. It's got the communication with the clients. It's got the support. It's got the emo emotional support. It's got the energy exchange. Um, so it's it's very it's a very fulfilling job. Um, and yeah, my next step is to study uh, animal massage. Um, I just got this idea a few weeks ago, and I just need to look it up more. Uh, surprisingly, it takes probably four times more than the iTech level three for human. Uh, it takes about 400 hours to, to get qualified. Uh, and it's about three times more expensive. And um, yeah, that's my story. <laughs> Amazing. Lucky animals. As if they don't get enough attention anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, when you when you you, when your clients are dogs, cats, and horses, what else do you want from from the universe? <laughs> exactly. My cat probably owes me a fortune in a I'll book it. I'll, I'll book it in. <laughs> First client. <laughs> so um, I'll just give a really brief intro um, to myself as well. Um, so my name's Kate Brown. Um, I have been practicing flavor for six years now and based in Stroud in Gloucestershire, which is in the Cotswolds. Um, and I started out in holistic massage, 
uh, which was a level four diploma and um, similar to I think everyone's story I just fell in love with it sort of the moment I started and um, I hadn't also you know I hadn't really thought about being a massage therapist I'd fluttered around not knowing what to do and done every job under the sun and um, I just felt like I wanted to work with people somehow in a way that would be sort of you know supporting and, and helpful to people's well-being but I wasn't really sure how to go about that um but kind of stumbled across the idea of massage one day and um yeah of course well yeah maybe I'll give that a go and um yeah just absolutely fell in love and um, after I finished my diploma um I decided I wanted to sort of learn more and learn sort of more about how the body works um, so I signed up for the remedial sports level five course, um, which was at the same place I did my holistic diploma in Bristol. Um, and that was fantastic. That really sort of popped up my knowledge and understanding um, of how the body works and injury. Um, and I thought at that point I would kind of really get into the sports side of things. Um, but uh, I actually soon decided that I didn't want to do that. And I really like kind of working with people um, in a more sort of relaxed um, therapeutic uh, setting. And um, I kind of draw on the knowledge that I learned through the sports massage, but I keep it um, a bit more therapeutic uh, and sort of relaxing. Um, so uh, I started my own mobile business. It was just me to begin with. And then I kind of um, picked up momentum and started to take on other therapists as well. So I've been slowly building my little massage team over the years. And um, yeah, we're all sort of raring to get a go again um, next week. So um, yeah, and over the years I've done um, other courses. I've done pregnancy massage. Um, I've done various things on facials. Uh, sort of spinal mobilization and manipulation. Um, oh, what else have I done? Taping, K taping, <laughs> um, and lots of other little bits. Um, and no, it wasn't last year, it was the year before, it was six years ago. Um, I competed at the national championship and um, won my category, which was advanced massage therapy which was um yeah a really big surprise um but a really valuable experience and that's where I met Tamer um and um yeah also just kind of really made some good networks through that experience so that sort of brought me to where I am today and um I'm quite interested in learning more about fascia. There's a lot about fascia at the moment. And um, so I'm sort of looking into some training perhaps for that. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say about, about it as well. And so there's a lot to be learned. So that's everyone, I think. <clears throat> I didn't miss anybody, did I? <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> So we just want to go around, um, obviously time sort of isn't as it usually is at the moment, we're looking for a very odd stage um, as COVID is going on. And I think it'd be great just to hear um, from you all briefly kind of what the last year um, has looked like for you and um, yeah, what your sort of biggest challenges are going to be getting back to work. So, um, to start with this time. I'll go in first. I'll go uh, Tamer to start this time then. So about last year. <laughs> um, last year was wasn't expected to happen. The whole pandemic wasn't uh, wasn't something that we had in our plan. Um, it's it was just reality, to be honest. Uh, I think I remember it took me about two weeks to recover from from the shock and uh, from the very beginning I, I thought that that's staying for a while that's not gonna that's not gonna end in few weeks a few months <coughs> sorry so um, 
Yeah, so it took me about two weeks. Um, and then I started just realizing, I just looked at it, to be honest, from, from different perspectives. Uh, from my personal perspectives, I needed, I needed some time off. I've been working very hard over the previous year. Uh, I had a lot on my mind that I wanted to do and I didn't have time for it. And I needed time for some me time. Um, sometimes we, we get uh, carried with our jobs. We care about people, but we forget about ourselves. And we forget that our body, we're fixing people's body, but at the same time, we need to give our body a break. Uh, we need to exercise, we need to relax, we need to meditate, we need to ground, we need to do a lot of stuff for ourselves. Um, so that's, that's, my, that's about myself. Uh, about the business, there was nothing, nothing to do except planning for the next step. And um, I think in June, it took me, I started straight away, I had an idea, um, about just dedicate, uh, creating a platform where there, there are educational uh, massage videos um, made by qualified therapists who studied anatomy and pathology, uh, who know what they're doing. Uh, and I've launched a platform called Massage Hub. And that basically includes um, only, only educational massage videos. Uh, it took me about three months to create it, launched it back in June, and I just focused on it. Um, and yeah, it started to grow in terms of school. I've got my own school. It's called International Massage Education. Uh, and basically I use the time to think about the next steps, uh, the next courses that I wanted to teach. Uh, and in the gap between July and, and November, I was working as a teacher at London School of Massage and uh, at my school. And it was, uh, it was good. Um, in terms of treatments, of course, it was just dead. And the first, especially the first lockdown, um, we weren't allowed to work at all. So all the support to the clients were over text messages, if they're suffering from any pain, uh, how to deal with it using self-massage, using stretching, um, that was all. So, um, that was last year <laughs> yeah yeah no well well done for being so sort of proactive and you know putting so much into place um as you said planning for the future um for the future probably it's going to be all about just a uh, massage hub again this experience what i learned from the experience that we need we need to create a sustainable business model um, all our work, we earn our income by working physically somewhere or depending, we depend on the massage work itself. Um, we need to have an extra something on the side that can help us to economically survive if anything like that happened again. It's just a learning curve. We need to just to learn the lesson and just to implement for the future um yeah that's uh, that's yeah. it for me the next stage would be again school and massage hub that would be my main focus my uh must um my massage treatments that will of course that will will carry on i'll keep like a small client base a uh, client um yeah my my regular clients basically i'm not gonna i'm not gonna try to expand my client base more at this point i'm just gonna focus on the other parts of the business yeah you've got a lot of stuff on so it sounds like you've got enough oh, yeah. to focus on that <laughs> oh yeah definitely great so um imogen um want to just tell us how your last year has been as well and sort of what what your feelings are going back to work yeah it's been a bit of a roller coaster for sure um i remember the first the, my last day at work on the first lockdown just breaking down just floods of tears i'm a bit of a self-confessed workaholic and just through throw myself my business is my whole world really and yeah it was devastating um sort of having everything taken from you with for no fault it felt awful and you, you sort of 
you knew you had to do it, but it, it yeah, it, it felt awful. And um, so the first lockdown, I kind of just lost the plot, really. Um, I got another job, just working in care because I needed to pay the bills. And then we were back. Um, mm -hmm. So that was all good. Um, and then the last lockdown, I've had like an epiphany. <laughs> so everything has changed. Um, I read an article on I can't remember who it was or something and then there's a feed going through it about um evidence-based practice to inform we have to play in our practice and coming from this place where my business had already obviously crashed because of COVID and then learning that what I thought I did possibly I wasn't doing just blew my blew my brain blew my world absolutely lost it luckily for me um, a few incredibly kind people, Anna Maria, every one of them, took the time to, re and I was so grateful because you really did take a lot of time, and I really had lost the plot, um, to explain in more depth that what I did was absolutely still valid. It was just how things worked and the thoughts behind it and the narratives that we say had changed. And that changed everything for me. And the last few is it weeks? Is it months? Is it years? I don't know now. It's all merged into one. But the last, yeah, the last few months, I've just been like siphoning up knowledge. I've bought half of Amazon. Um, I'm listening to podcasts and webinars and just completely rethinking what I'm actually doing when, when I go back will be pretty much the same. But everything behind why I'm doing it and what I'm telling my clients has completely changed it's amazing and I'm, I'm so excited it's liberating it's yeah, liberating it's it? liberating yes so excited to get mm. back so in a way this year has been awful um and but it's given me that it gave me that time to do that that I wouldn't have had before because I was so tunnel visioned into working and earning and, and building my business I had stopped mm. looking out for what was going on and what was new and what was happening in the world other than my little clinic sat there on my own so it's it's been awful but it's also been amazing because it's it's made me stop and reevaluate and learn given me time to learn and now it's exciting and i'm actually cutting back <laughs> i'm cutting back my time to make sure that each week i've got a day to read and to learn and to catch up on all the information and all the books I've bought <laughs> the, and to keep learning so yeah now it's actually coming towards hopefully touch word the end of it all it's been a really positive thing in my life and I wouldn't have said that a few months ago absolutely not no oh, oh yeah well done <laughs> for doing that and just taking the, the opportunity to it's your own pathway it's your own pathway it's your own pathways no beautiful though what, what you said i think because uh, what, once you once you have that realization it consolidates yeah even further the great value that we have yeah absolutely. Uh, and you feel yes that's you know this is what it's all about is liberating that's the word i use so yeah. that's beautiful <laughs> beautiful what you said oh lovely um Anna, as we've got you on screen would you like to tell us a bit about your last year as well um, considering that uh, it's been a, you know it, covid is a tragedy it's been dramatic so you know if he's been you know for, for the world it's been a, a major crisis but I I must say it's like Imogen it's for you know if I take away the, the business I run a couple of businesses and obviously from the business perspective it's really really affected from many other perspectives from the industry because I have a, a bit of a bigger role in in the industry as part of one of the associations has been really beneficial. Beneficial because uh, it allows us, uh, it allowed us to diversify, uh, to actually tell our clients that what we are 
it's way more than just our own zone. In the moment in which the doors are too close and we closed every lockdown, we closed our doors because we felt it was the most ethical uh, and uh, following government guidelines and what the government was trying to tell us is to, you know, we need we need to we need to um, try to restrict the this virus. So all of a sudden we found ourselves so that we could not touch our clients anymore. And a lot of therapists, a lot of students, a lot of colleagues, all of a sudden realized that actually the benefit of their interaction was not only through their hands. The benefit of interaction, which some of you actually touched on, was about the therapeutic alliance between the person, the therapist, and the client. And the therapeutic alliance that is, is the major part of the, of the encounter can be achieved even through WhatsApp, even through Zoom, even better. And, and actually, some therapists they kind of diversified and moved away a little bit from just doing the treatment to actually giving advice, like I think Tamar said very, very eloquently, giving advice through other medium. And that showed to, to us that we are just more than our hands, that our treatment is more than our hands. And it, 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 it makes the clients also, I think uh, for, for us, Zoom has been excellent. It gives the clients the self-efficacy, which is paramount for positive outcomes. Because how many times, for those of you that work a little bit with more movement or other strategies that they're not passive or on what is the biggest uh, barrier? It is the fact that the clients come into the room and they just want to get undressed and get onto the couch. So that's why sometimes it's difficult to, to fulfill the whole interviewing process because of the client expectation. All of a sudden, you don't have the expectations any longer because you are on Zoom. So you have all the time to listen to those clients to listen to the story. So from that perspective, I think it was really, really positive because you realize you're more than just your hands. You're way more than just your hands. From another perspective on a, I call it on a broader, broader uh, industry wide, it shook us. All of a sudden it took away our, uh, let's call it our, identity, especially for, for some of us in certain industry where we felt we were not one or the other. But I think it was really positive because what he, what he, he brought to the table is the fact that where do we belong? Because we are not healthcare, right or wrongly, we are not healthcare. And those discussions, I think, needs to be needs to be had so that we can then move forward. If we understand the value we have, and I think it was the lovely guy at the beginning, Chris, you said something so beautiful. You really know your value because you said, I just love to work with people to make them feel good. You know, so you said something like, oh, to, to relax. That is so important. S some part of it is part of healthcare, but some other part of it are not. So we need to understand where our position is and then move forward. So that's why I think it's been really valuable, COVID in general in the industry, because it's actually uh, made us talk within the industry stakeholders, where do we belong? And what do we need to do? If, if we want to really be part of healthcare, being part of healthcare, talking about, when I say healthcare, I talk about physio, osteopath, chiropractor, so, excuse me, registered professions. Being part of healthcare comes with responsibilities because we're working with people's health. We're working with people's pain. We're not just working with people uh, to relax. We, we are looking at people with pain and injury. So there is, a, there is a, a, a wider responsibility. And until now, we haven't talked about that. 
We all know that we got great values, but now the great values that we provide has been scrutinized and we need to be you, we need to be on top of, of what we do. So I think, as I say, removing the fact has been a tragedy, removing the fact that many people are being affected, uh, their, life, their, 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 their life, their family, their livelihood. But if I look at myself and the way I've seen me in my clinic, me as a practitioner, me as an educator, me as a, 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 the, the wider industry, I think, is, I think it was a button to reset. And also I met people like Kimi, like Imogen, which is great. So, yeah, I, mean, I could talk forever, so just stop me. Yeah. Right no, that's great. I think that's a really relevant point and it has raised a lot of questions about how we want to be identified in the industry. Um, and yeah, although it's not sort of come through the best means, I think it's really great that those those questions... Those are discussions needs to be had, Kate, uh, because lots of things needs to change so we all need to put our house on order and uh, lots of things needs to change but also we need to start having those discussions and until now we didn't have them so now the change can start yeah right so um Claire, do you want to um tell us a bit yeah about uh, i mean just to year? kind of echo everything and yeah. you know particularly just that word reset, um, once I got over the initial, uh, like Tamer said, kind of, I think it was about two week shock and kind of devastation and just what what's going on, what am I gonna do and kind of panic. I kind of then just thought, well, well, actually I thought it's okay, I can do this for three months. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> Little did I know it wasn't gonna be three months, but um, yeah, and I just, you know, that word reset and I just made sure that I'd stayed in touch with all my clients. So I sent out a weekly email after the two week shock. Every week I sent them a weekly email called Claire's Tips. Uh, and, you know, with things that they could do for self care, for products, because I sell products as well. So product of the week and lots of different things, just and inviting them as well to ask for help and to ask questions. And if they wanted a zoom to you know if there was pain management going on so just kind of getting keeping the connection going which was really really worthwhile because you know as soon as i think it was july wasn't it as soon as july came well but prior to that you know everyone was in the diary so that that from a business point of view really helped um and then i took quite a bit online as well and started teaching um some uh, pregnancy and I teamed up with a colleague of mine who's an acupuncturist we do and we actually we've done it now every, uh, every other month since uh, last, April 2020 and it's uh, for pregnant couples um, and we do an hour course and actually the first one we did for charity um, which was great um, and now we charge for that so that's something that's kind of come from uh, you know being able to work in the same capacity so um, and some other things I did online as well with clients. Um, and then actually what I did is a lot of CPD online and then just thought about my business. And um, I think what Imogen said as well, just kind of thought, hang on a minute, I'm con I was constantly fitting everyone in and, you know, just really trying to fit everyone in. And, you know, you never want to say no. And then I suddenly kind of had this moment of, oh, these are going to be my set hours. And that is what I have done. I still you have set treatment times. And it just, yeah, was this kind of light bulb moment where I thought, this is as many clients as I need to see every week. And this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try to stick to it. Um, so, yeah, it's been tough, but it's definitely a great reset and I feel that my business has got better because of it because I had time to think to kind of digest everything that I've learned um, particularly also with the cranial sacral and how that crosses over with all my work um yeah so actually although I'm so happy that it's coming to an end, hopefully, uh, it has been a really good, I'll just say that word again, reset. Yeah, yeah, I can completely echo those feelings of um, sort of, um, yeah, having the time 
that you wouldn't ordinarily have and just you have to kind of reevaluate yeah. and um, get a better balance in your own life. So yeah, that's very nice to hear. We too often um, work in the business, Kate, sorry, we too often work in the business is that instead of working on the business. So this one gave us yeah, gave us the opportunity to actually do all those little li nitty gritty spreadsheet and and looking actually where we are going, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just definitely. writing it, just writing it down and thinking, oh, this is how I want my week to look. I actually have control. I can have I control. control. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. So, Chris, over to you. Um, I kind of when when it all happened, I, I did have a, a a blind moment of panic for a, for a quick moment. Uh, well, probably a little bit longer than a quick moment. But um, I mean, I actually got ill with COVID. Well, I think it was COVID. Um, it, in March, it was just before the lockdown got all. In, it was like just before it it became apparent. So I was actually ill for that two week stretch when when it all shut off anyway so I was kind of at that moment I, I had I wasn't even bothered I was I was in bed like hallucinating or something anyway um but I was a bit um I'd set up a big corporate side of my business as well and I had lots of monthly corporate clients um you know I took a tea I'd got a team of massage therapists, a bit like yourself Kate I got a really good team together of massage therapists that I'd worked with um, you know, every every week we we were all out at different places. You know, all the major banks, all these big corporate companies, and that was a nice steady income stream coming in, as well as myself working on the boat. Um, so obviously, I did sit and think, oh, what am I going to do here? You know, everything stopped because everything just literally stopped. You know, all the offices closed, so there was no none of the corporate stuff was happening whatsoever. Um, but you know, I had a little bit of time to, to panic and, and I, I, I actually sent a CV off to a lot of places just on the off chance, um, like your Aldis and your Asdas and stuff like that. And I'm so thankful that none of that I got, they all rejected me and I found it quite funny actually. But um, <laughs> literally they all co-op, Aldi, Asda, Tesco, tried them all and they were all crying out for workers as well. This is what made me laugh was that they were like, we need staff because um, obviously they were so busy. So I sent them a CV off, all got rejected. Nice, nice, like, rejection. But I just thought it was funny. I was like, oh, I can't even get a job now in Aldi or something. I was like, great. Um, but I'm so glad that that happened, actually, because um, I teach mindfulness as well, and I teach it in schools. And that became a massive, massive thing for me over the last year because, obviously, a lot of the schools, although they were short, they were open for key worker children. Um, and I found myself in a school for five days a week teaching mindfulness um, amongst all the, the bubbles of, of key worker kids. And um, that was awesome because it was, uh, for me, it was obviously not hands on, but it was still in person. So I was still getting that human interaction um, just with little humans. It was great. And um, that really kept me busy. And, and it, but it wasn't so, so full on, so it, uh, you know I wasn't tired. I was obviously very chilled because of it. it was, that's all I was doing. It was so I had a lot of time to plan, you know, what what I was going to do. I ended up doing a lot of Zoom um, mindfulness courses and sessions with the corporate companies that we would normally go into to do hands on treatment. Not not all of them because not a lot of them are into a lot of them are officey type. They want hands on deep tissue, shoulder, neck massage. You know, they, they don't want to be messing around with mindfulness or so they think anyway, um, managed to convert some of them to at least try it. Um, so that managed to keep me, keep me busy and sane really for the, for the year. Um, obviously I've been missing the hands on and when we got to reopen and um, for that little stretch in between the lockdowns, you know, I was a bit bit worried at first and the whole visor the masks the whole protocol everything that was come with come with it but I actually got into that and I really enjoyed it and I had more space I, I, I as everyone said here like we've all probably fallen foul to to overstretching ourselves and doing like stupid eight hour days and stuff and being realistic I don't think you can do that you know really without wearing yourself out in the long run so just by cutting the days down, doing like having hour gaps between clients and just doing like four clients a day, you know, when, when we could, that was a revelation for me. And it was like, I was thinking, you know what, I'd probably carry on just doing it that way, even when things go back to normal, because 
there's still ample time for people to book in and, and it just makes the clients obviously have to be a bit more proactive and actually book the sessions properly in advance rather than last minute because there's less space and they can't just book any old slot throughout the day. It was like had to be them them specific times. So I think that was a massive positive and that's something I'm definitely going to carry carry on throughout. Um, yeah, so I've kept busy and I've kept sane and, and it's luckily for me, Aldi and Tesco didn't take me on because uh, I might have struggled to have got out of that once I got in, you know, with mortgage payments and stuff. It is quite hard when you then take on another job to get back out of it again. So I am glad that uh, I'm not a delivery man right now. So, yeah. Yeah, great. Well, thank you, everyone. We've managed to fill out almost a whole hour already. So we'll just wrap up now. Um, but it's been really nice to hear um, about you all and um, yeah, I can't wait to hear more about what everybody does and what you think of everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, just to recap, I guess the session, um, I think we can all sort of agree that although this year has been, you know, pretty awful um, and there's still a lot of trouble uh, probably to come but um, we've all sort of managed to take some learning from it and also just some time to reevaluate where we are and who we are and how to look after ourselves as well as others so I think there's you know real value in that and um, we have managed to take something positive out of it uh, which is really good. So, um, yeah, I just want to thank everyone who sort of tuned in to uh, this session. And if you have any uh, topics or comments um, that you'd like to discuss, any questions that we'd really like to know, um, and you just can talk about whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> um, so, um, thank you to uh, the panel. Um, great listening to you all. Does anyone have any sort of crazy comments before we, before we sign off? Good luck, everybody, going back to work next week. Oh, yeah, good and luck. Remember, yes, good luck. Much, yeah, remember that your, your, your role is bigger than what you can do with your hands. Sorry, my dogs are just barking now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, good luck to everybody. Great. Enjoy yeah, being back. And it'd be great, great. We can all catch up next month and... Uh, tell our uh, findings and our progress yeah absolutely <laughs> yes. yeah definitely and it's been really nice just to see some new faces as well so that's nice social socializing again <laughs> <laughs> um, so um guys if you want to be alerted um, when the next episode goes live just hit the subscribe button or you can sign up um, to the Massage Warehouse newsletter in the description below. So thank you everyone for joining again and uh, we will see you next month. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Take care.